Megan rose earlier than normal that morning and, while enjoying the sun's first rays, made her way to the restroom. She was not going to take the day off to relax. Rather, she was going to get some errands done. Megan had her hair done at the salon first, and then she intended to go grocery shopping. Megan treasured Sundays because they provided a respite from her work week, enabling her to unwind a bit. Three months ago, her father was diagnosed with a hereditary condition that required expensive treatment. Since then, she has been working relentlessly. Megan cared very much for her father, whom she loved very much. Megan got ready fast and drank some coffee before going outside. She quickly covered herself in her old jacket and ran to the nearest bus stop since. Even though it was good weather, it was still pretty cold. After a long winter, spring finally arrived, but the air was still chilly, turning Megan's cheeks a fiery red. Thankfully, the line was short, and Megan was able to get a window seat on a warm bus in no time. Megan started carrying out her plans as soon as she got downtown from the suburbs where she lived. It was getting close to noon, but the weather was still cool. After she had gone to the hairdresser and done her grocery shopping, Megan decided to grab a hot beverage from the closest cafe in order to warm up. The cafe was packed with people, which caught her off guard. Megan swiftly made her way to the warm corner of the room where she saw an empty table. After completing a few items on her to-do list, Megan felt a noticeable uplift in her mood as she sipped her hot drink in the cozy cafe. At that very moment, a man burst through the open door of the cafe, startling both the other patrons and the administrator. Wearing a ripped jacket, torn jeans, and old sneakers held together by twine, the man was in his mid-twenties. The administrator's face conveyed his disapproval of the homeless man's presence. He was obviously rather chilly and only needed a hot cup of coffee to warm him up. But there were no available tables and the other customers were clearly unwilling to share space with him. Megan beckoned to the guy when he was ready to depart. As a reaction to her motion, he twitched his lips and a gentle smile spread across his face. Skipping over other customers' objections, he found Megan in the middle of the packed cafe and sat down. Clearly relieved, yours truly. Ma'am, you were a great assistance to me. I was feeling completely desperate, the homeless man recalled with emotion. Don't bring it up, I failed to do anything noteworthy. By the way, my name is Megan, she said with a friendly grin. It was as if Megan's comments had shone a light into the man's life. His face lit up in an instant. His name is Spencer, but I'm not sure whether that's the correct spelling, he confessed with a hint of shame. Megan was shocked. How do you not know your own name? I've had enough of this life. Neither my identity nor the names of my parents are on my memory. I had a concussion and woke up in a ditch a year ago. Others who were homeless helped me and even gave me a name. But I don't remember anything from my past life, Spencer said. Her voice quivering with emotion as she tried to suppress anguish. Megan shook her head in sorrow, feeling terrible for the guy who was in such a tough spot. With a heavy heart, Spencer retrieved some change from his pocket and bought a cup of coffee for himself. Opting not to broach the awkward subject any further, to show that Spencer wasn't expected to chip in, Megan snatched his hand and shook her head. It's my pleasure, she said with a delightful tone. As soon as Spencer's coffee arrived from the waitress, he seemed to calm down. Even though their encounter was unexpected, Spencer couldn't help but be captivated by Megan's beauty. Unaware of it, they began conversing, experiencing a slight mutual attraction. An hour flew by in the course of what was supposed to be just a short chat. The waitress delivering the bill almost kept them from leaving until nightfall. Spencer stepped aside and politely requested a pen or pencil from the waitress after realizing that Megan planned to pay for everything alone. Spencer hastily jotted down some notes on a napkin, folded it multiple times, and then presented it to Megan. Spencer added, take it, but please read it only after I leave, as he fought to keep his emotions in check on his way to the exit. Despite Megan's best efforts, he had already slipped away. The message, scrawled in neat handwriting, was not shown to Megan until Spencer had departed before she unfolded the napkin. She read it with tears falling down her cheeks. She had to take a few deep breaths before she could comprehend the gravity of Spencer's remarks. 
I appreciate your kindness, the message read, something truly miraculous happened today because of some coffee and some kindness. I was about to die until I saw your demeanor. I almost took my own life earlier if you hadn't intervened. So much appreciated. Have joy, please. Spencer, best regards. After Megan dabbed her eyes with a handkerchief, she cautiously placed the napkin in her pocket and departed from the cafe. Naturally, Spencer had departed. After making sure the roadway was clear, Megan returned home, profoundly affected by the experience and the surprising twist of fate. Life must have been so tough for Spencer. Thoughts of him kept popping into Megan's head. He should have waited for me outside before leaving. Why did I allow him to continue? As she stepped out onto the street, Megan berated herself. By the garbage cans, she beheld a small dog that was both chilly and hungry. And it was whining. Megan felt terrible compassion for the homeless animal when she saw the puppy's sorrowful eyes as it gazed up at her. The dog was taken up by Megan, who knelt down to inquire. How did you end up here? You poor thing? Obviously, he would have answered if the puppy could talk. At the moment, his only option was to lick Megan's cheek and curl up in her jacket for warmth. Okay, enough is enough. Quit doing that, Megan lovingly responded. I'm ticklish, and with that, a new inhabitant named Buddy came into her life. Megan had a lot of problem keeping up with the hyperactive puppy because he was always playing, running, and gnawing on random things. But Megan took over Buddy's training as he grew older, and he eventually became a model pet, even though Megan took on extra duties after Buddy entered her life. She couldn't help but dwell on Spencer, whose comments had affected her very core. During their strolls across the park, Buddy would play fetch with squirrels, catching them by their fluffy tails. Megan would sometimes pick Buddy up a treat from the deli after their walks. The proprietor of the deli had become accustomed to their patronage and consistently provided them with fresh bones. Just as Megan was about to walk into the deli, an SUV drew up and a dapper man got out. Grabbing her gaze, it was impossible for Megan to control her feelings. When the man from the SUV was revealed to be Spencer, the homeless man, the woman's amazement was quite understandable. To Megan, it had to have been him. Spencer spun around just in time to see the attractive woman walking her dog. I am Megan, unabashedly overjoyed to see you, the man exclaimed. Still, a frightening snarl escaped his lips. Concerned about Spencer's allegiance, Megan inquired with a hint of astonishment. She was about to speak up again when the man embraced her and kissed her on the lips. Spencer, it turned out, inherited a fortune from a landowner who had millions stashed away. He was held for ransom a year ago. Regrettably, the kidnappers never got paid since Spencer's dad was too proud and belligerent. The kidnappers had no choice but to brutally assault the businessman and then toss him into a ditch on the side of the road due to his strong beliefs. Regardless, Spencer made it through all that happened to him, albeit he did suffer a partial loss of memory. Actually, Josh was his real name, not Spencer. To Megan, though, it was of little consequence. She finally cracked a smile after weeks of hiding it and embraced the man tightly after hearing his story. A number of things became clear to me throughout this period. My entire world was turned upside down by what you did for me in that cafe. I was walking down the street after our encounter at the cafe when a man grabbed my hand. It was the manager of my father's firm. After recognizing me, he led me to his residence. Then there came memory recovery focused therapy and rehabilitation. And throughout it all, you were the only thing on my mind. I made a vow to ask you to marry me if I locate you. Even if you might not believe me, what then do you say? Josh questioned, unable to contain his sobs. To say Megan was taken aback and taken aback by anything would be a huge understatement. It was unexpected for the woman to be asked to marry, especially in that very spot on the street. Everything happened so quickly that it felt like a dream. Reassuring herself, Megan said, Yes, honey, I will marry you, in a quiet voice. He wagged his tail and gave a quiet bark. The young millionaire took Megan by the hand and helped her into his SUV making sure to have her devoted dog in tow. The young couple was now starting a joyful life together, full of the little and large pleasures that come with being part of a supportive and amiable family.
Later, Megan and Josh relocated to Ohio, where they purchased a large home next to a forest and a lake. There, the young businessman also purchased two dilapidated farms. Following extensive renovation and wise investments, they became a prosperous farming enterprise for him. His farmlands soon started to bring in a tangible income for the young family, enabling them to purchase a house close by for Megan's father and cover the costs of his medical care and recovery. The young couple had a beautiful wedding, and a year later, Megan gave birth to a sweet baby who brought laughter and joy into their new home right away. After watching the first story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Now, let's watch another similar story. For the past two months, Chris Parker had been content in his role as a restaurant security guard. Before this, he had been a contract soldier in the Marine Corps, where he had often put his life on the line for his nation. Defending justice became Chris's principal objective as an adult. But he had already gained a reputation for championing the downtrodden and vulnerable while still in school. Chris had a hard time adjusting to civilian life after serving in the military, but he eventually adjusted to his new home and found work in the food industry. Chris was proud of his duties as a security guard, even though the pace was different from his time in the Marines. Chris was courteous, prompt, and hardworking, in contrast to his predecessor, who was let go due to tardiness and absenteeism. Chris was most irritated by the attitude of the restaurant manager, Alfred Thompson. Alfred was more comfortable with micromanagement and despised those who dared to speak their minds. Despite Alfred's animosity towards him at first, Chris showed the manager nothing but respect and never criticized him. It was uncomfortable for Chris and the rest of the restaurant staff because of the tension that Alfred's negative energy created. Since Alfred was the boss, Chris knew he could do everything he wanted, but he couldn't fix the situation with Alfred, but his co-workers still thought highly of Chris, seeing him as a trustworthy young guy they could lean on in times of need. After Chris's father died in a vehicle accident when he was five years old, his mother, Charlotte Parker, had been Chris' primary caregiver. Chris had strong principles instilled in him by Charlotte, who was determined to be a single parent. He loved his mom very much and was there for her any time she needed him, reassuring her when he had to go to work. Charlotte understood Chris's fiery personality, but she also knew he would protect the innocent and stand up for the oppressed no matter what. When Chris first started working at the restaurant a month ago, he knew everyone's name, from the wait staff to the cooks. A new waitress named Nancy caught his eye one day. She was a beautiful woman in her mid-twenties. With long blonde hair and big gray eyes that looked like a doze, Nancy served Chris with the elegance of a butterfly. Darting from table to table, Chris was pleased. His admiration for her skills was heightened by the fact that, in contrast to many others, she showed no interest in accepting gratuities. Although the staff did nothing to stop Alfred from taking a cut of the tips, Chris knew it was wrong. Nobody on the wait crew had the guts to tell Alfred how unfair he was. Since everyone on staff planned to stay at the restaurant, there was no reason for them to risk their connection with their boss. Consistently watching over the peaceful establishment, Chris remained vigilant at his job, but that particular day was unique. The presence of a wealthy, inebriated youth gang in the parking lot was a warning indication of impending danger. Chris clenched his jaw. He'd dealt with troublesome clients before. Upon entering, the mob promptly started tormenting the wait staff. Despite their aggressive attitude, Nancy found herself servicing them, while smiling and giving menus to the males at the table. One of them gave her the evil eye and laughed. Nancy did her best to serve them without incident, knowing full well how difficult it would be, while Alfred, the manager, paid no attention to the issue and was instead concerned only with increasing his profit. Chris maintained a careful eye on everything. Prepared to step in if necessary, the owner of the restaurant had no idea that Alfred was taking advantage of his employees. Because of this, he had the sincere belief that his establishment was running smoothly. The comments made by the young males, meanwhile, were more hurtful and nasty. They were refusing to pay when Nancy brought their order, and one of them even grabbed her hand and pulled her toward the table. After a while of standing by, Chris stepped in. 
Even though Chris didn't look particularly intimidating, he dove right in. Look at this. The defender is right here. One man taunted. But Chris swiftly took him down using takedown techniques perfected in countless Marine Corps training sessions. The other two men hesitated before trying to encircle Chris, who was now down one. He quickly subdued them both, thinking about how inebriated they were and how decent they might be when sober. Chris came back twice more to make sure all the troublesome males were gone after he led them out into the street. Well, that's it, Chris grinned and concluded. Nancy happily said, you were great in there, fiddling with her hair. Chris dismissed the compliment and went back to his work. A little while later, the manager came out of his office, clearly upset over the affluent patrons being turned away from the restaurant. He knew that if the parents of those young guys were powerful, they would not be happy with the way their kids were treated at the restaurant, and that might cause him some trouble. The boss, however, did not seem to care that Chris or his waitress were being mistreated. The manager lost his temper the moment he caught eyes with the ex-marine. What are you doing, in your opinion? Are you attempting to frighten off all of my clients, following your actions? Who will patronize our restaurant? He chastised. I'm not paying you to throw customers out onto the street. But Chris defended me, Mr. Thompson. Things might have gotten out of control if it weren't for him, Nancy said attempting to talk sense into the manager's ears. Alfred Thompson was getting more and more irritated by the minute. He did not want a waitress to question him or indicate he was mistaken. He'd hated them both from the moment they'd shown up, and now seemed like the right time to brush them both aside. I see that both of you have decided. You both may now depart. Don't expect your last paycheck. You've been fired. Pointing firmly in the direction of the door, Alfred angrily said, I'll use it to cover the damages you caused. Chris was aware that the manager could not be fired without cause and that what they were doing was entirely illegal, but he also saw that the manager had all the power in this scenario. Chris glanced thoughtfully at Nancy before heading toward the door. For him, losing his work in such a terrible way was a personal failure. It wasn't until Chris went outside that he noticed Nancy was pursuing him. It was inappropriate of you to pursue me, Chris sadly said. Maybe he would have let you keep your job. Not at all, Nancy firmly replied. I'm not working with that man for another minute. Chris offered to walk Nancy home because it was becoming late. In order to avoid having to face his mother, who would undoubtedly inquire about his workday, he planned to buy some time, but Chris started to feel uncomfortable before they had even ventured a quarter of a mile from the restaurant. He felt something wasn't quite right. It felt like someone was staring at his back with extreme intensity. Chris turned around and saw a car coming down the street slowly, its windows darkened. Its glacial speed aroused suspicions at once. Nancy. I'm very confident we're being followed, but I don't know what it is. Those guys from the restaurant could be it. In any case, we must exercise caution, Chris remarked circumspectly. Nancy unexpectedly spun around and waved to the Ford's driver who peered back at her from behind his headlights. Do you know this car? Chris was taken aback and questioned. Yes, I do, Nancy said with an air of secrecy. Who are you? Chris inquired. His curiosity peaked. When Nancy realized she couldn't go on about it, she flashed a mischievous smile and changed the conversation. Chris seemed to tighten up. Being kept in the dark was something he despised. It was pointless to accompany Nancy home because she was going to get in the car. Short and dry, Chris said his goodbyes and then threw his hood over his head to go home. Charlotte Parker, his mother, was waiting for him at the door. As one would anticipate, something wasn't right. As she knew her son so well, are you really in a mess? Is everything going wrong for you at work? You seem distressed, and you're heading home before everyone else. I don't understand, inquired with a hint of worry in her voice, unconsciously. Chris made a face when the subject of work was brought up. Mom, I lost my job, so now I'm out of a job to argue about. Mrs. Parker drew back slightly as her complexion paled. She held back from scolding Chris despite the flurry of thoughts racing through her mind. Rather, she extended an invitation to join her in the kitchen for supper. Chris sat boredly, picking at his salad. Even though he wasn't hungry, he went back to his room after thanking his mom for the meal. 
he lost his job because of his strong sense of justice, and he couldn't sleep because of it. As daylight drew nearer and the sunbeams reached Chris's bedroom windows, he finally drifted off to sleep. He hardly slept because someone started pounding on the door. As Chris cautiously approached the door, he was taken aback to see Nancy standing there, still sporting that enigmatic smile. Nancy, how did you find me? Chris let out a startled yell. That's me. May I come in? Or would you rather we have our conversation here? Smiling, Nancy inquired. A quick invitation inside was extended by Chris. In the kitchen, Nancy was busy brewing coffee. Mrs. Parker smiled when she watched her son engage, but she eventually retired to her bed, leaving them to their own devices. Chris poured Nancy a cup of coffee, and she wasted little time getting down to business. How would you feel about becoming the manager at the restaurant where they kicked me out yesterday? Chris let out a startled yell. Well, they kicked you out and now they want you back, Nancy answered with another smile, it's clear that you have much to learn, my father is the true proprietor of the eatery, after finishing college, I went undercover as a waiter in order to intern there, Alfred, that scoundrel, had no idea yesterday what a fool he was, then Chris found out that Nancy wasn't any ordinary waitress, she was the daughter of a millionaire. The ex-marine gladly accepted Nancy's offer and was ready to get to work right away. Chris dutifully succeeded Alfred Thompson after his dismissal. The restaurant thrived and saw a dramatic increase in income throughout his tenure as manager. The story went that what started as a friendship between Nancy and Chris soon turned into a love affair that would last for years. Friends and family of the couple were sure that they would have many happy memories to share with future generations at family gatherings. After watching the stories above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.